I know, I know. If I want this channel to grow, I should be shilling a crypto token right now or pumping up the next new hot meme stock on Wall Street bets. But I have a tendency to self-sabotage. And so today we're going to cover another fundamental analysis metric. And this is going to be a profitability measure called ROA, return on assets. So what exactly is return on assets? Well, it helps answer the question, how efficiently is a company using its assets to generate a profit? It's a measure of profitability relative to its assets. So how do we calculate it? Well, the simple way is you take net income and you divide it by total assets. And usually if you're using core, Quarterly, then you take the last four quarters and you average out those total assets. And I'm going to show you a real life example of how to calculate ROA. And then I'm going to talk about how we can actually evaluate a stock based on its ROA. And this is actually going to be an excellent exercise to show you that you should never just trust one resource, that you should always compare with another resource as well when you're looking at these valuation measures or profitability metrics. Because I believe I uncovered a mistake that Yahoo Finance is doing. I'm going to show you my method and then you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay, so we're going to use Yahoo Finance for this. So if you go ahead and you navigate to Yahoo Finance, you type in any ticker. So in this case, we're going to be using Intel Corporation. Once you click that, you'll see there's a lot of data here, but you can always go to statistics. And statistics has a lot of valuation measures. I actually created a separate tutorial on each and every single one of these, and as well as financial highlights. And now today we're looking at return on assets, trailing 12 months, and it's one of the two indicators that Yahoo Finance has for management effectiveness. And we'll talk about why this is used for management effectiveness. However, this 8.59% figure, I suspect, is incorrect, and I will show you why, and I will compare it to other resources that actually agree with me. So let's take a look again at how we calculate return on assets. It is the net income divided by total assets, and the way total assets is calculated is you take the last four quarters and you divide that by Four. So you add the total assets of the last four quarters divided by four. So how do we find the assets figure? Well, we type in Intel Corporation to Yahoo Finance, and then we click on financials. And the place where you can find the assets is going to be on the balance sheet. So right here, you click balance sheet, financials, balance sheet, and then you go to total assets. And as you can see here, right now we're looking at annual. That doesn't help us because remember, we are trying to find the trailing 12 months. This TTM means trailing 12 months return on assets. So what we have to do is we have to look at the last four quarters because that makes up the year, not the last four years. That would be four year total. So we go to quarterly and then what we have to do here is we're going to have to add each of these. So the last four quarters and divide by four. So to not waste your precious time, I added these four numbers and I got this number here. Now we have to divide it by four because we're looking at the average total assets. So as you can see here, there's 168 billion, 167 billion, 154 billion, 150 billion, and it averages out to 160 billion, 396 million, 750 thousand. That's gonna be our assets. Now we gotta go find net income so that we could divide over these total assets. Now where do we find net income? Well, that's easy. You go to the income statement, and if you know how to read the income statement, which I will cover in a separate tutorial, you scroll down until you find net income. So over here, you could see that the total net income is 19,868,000,000. Remember, the number is in thousands. So this isn't 19,868,000, it's 19,868,000,000. So let's go ahead and take this number and divide over total average assets. So I've pulled up my super expensive calculator once again, and if we type in 19 billion, 868 million, 000, 000, divide that by 160 billion, 396 million, 750,000, you'll see that we get 12.38%. Because remember, you have to multiply this by 100 to get your percent. So 12.38, or think of it as 12.4%. Now, this is a problem. Why is that? Well, if we go to our trusted resource, Yahoo Finance, we see that the return on assets is 8.59%. 
but we just found it to be 12.4%. So I went absolutely crazy when making this video because I tried to calculate it every which way in order to get this 8.59% figure and I couldn't. So then I went and I checked some of the other resources on what the return on assets is on Intel. When I go here on finbox.com and I look, I see that Intel's last 12 months return on assets is 12.4%. And that's exactly what I just calculated. And this is the 12 months, so TTM. And then if I go to csimarket.com, I will see that the return on assets is 12.39% as well. And that's exactly what we found. So it looks like we are correct and the way I calculated it is correct. However, if I go back to Yahoo Finance, they're saying it's 8.59%. So Yahoo Finance, explain yourself, because I looked at three other resources and they all said 12.4%. So now that we know how to calculate ROA, how exactly do we use it to analyze and assess stocks? How is it helpful? Well, first of all, you have to make sure that you're comparing return on assets to not only companies in the same sector, but also to a company similar in size and maturity. If ROA rises over time, it means a company is doing a good job generating more profits from each dollar it owns in assets. And that makes sense, right? Because it's net income over total assets. And also a declining ROA means a company made some bad investments that aren't squeezing out the profits they had hoped for. And so as you can see return on assets, it gives you some insight into management effectiveness. And so with that being said, let me know if this type of content is enjoyable to you, if this is helping you become a better investor, better at fundamental analysis, or if I should just stick to shilling crypto and talking about the hottest meme stocks, which I plan to do anyways. So let me know which stock, crypto, options trading strategy you wish for me to cover next, and I will see you guys in the next video.